<coughs> that kind of is like for the guys that are putting it together. It's not really few. There is installation manuals here. The three metals are there. Um, I just thought I'd give you the company. This is our company. When we, whenever we go out and we do a presentation for anybody, this is the company one. And it kind of gives you a little more about us and, and, and gives you more um, in depth. And any questions after, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly take care of them. Um, first of all, welcome. My name is Mike Gallardi with Vega. Those of you who don't know me and those of you who do know me, I've been with Vega since uh, May of uh, 2011. Uh, before that, I worked for a uh, European boiler manufacturer that has been, I worked there for about six years. And before that, I had my own business, uh, plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and sprinkler work uh, in Massachusetts. I am a licensed master plumber, master gas fitter, and journeyman sprinkler fitter. I also have an unlimited oil burner license, so I can play with all kinds of big fire. <laughs> so that's what I like to do. Uh, that tells me, tells me a little about, just tell you a little bit about me. I've been in the trade a long time. So since uh, 1983, when I got out of college, um, I've been in the trade. So I'm certified to drive a forklift. I did that once too. Uh, once. Uh, Not trying to show you up or With high school. Um, our company is 115 years old. Uh, our first product, in fact, this will tell you a little bit about it. Franz Wigner, he invented, he saw a need for it. He was in the pub and he said, draw me a, draw me a beer or an ale. And the, um, the barkeep went over and the wooden bung didn't really work. So he decided, hey, if I make that out of bronze, my company makes bronze. We won't, it won't get stuck. So basically that's what he did. He, he invented the bronze beer tap. The first, the first uh, bronze beer tap. Uh, long about the early 1900s, he got he got together and his company was failing. They were selling all this bronze to to make fittings. They made flare fittings for water distribution. He saw they were failing, so he had some money. He said, "I will buy you." So that's when they got into plumbing. Um, you know, in about the the 30s, they got into drainage systems. Um, uh, you know. DWV and that type of thing, and you know traps and everything like that. Uh, then there were a couple of world wars in between there. We, you know we don't go too much in that. But uh, in the 60s they got into solder fittings, solder cup fittings, and solder cup fittings. You know they've been the, they've been known forever. And then about in the uh, mid to late 80s, Vega decided. You know in Europe they're having problems with their their water piping systems, and, and the problem with it was is the water is so aggressive. And what they did is they, they went ahead and they uh, developed a system in 1989, a press system. And it was bronze fittings with stainless steel pipe. That was the hmm. first press system out there. That's what Vega did. And then in <coughs> 1995, Vega was the first in the world to do copper to copper. So if anybody asks you who, you know, the, about these other companies, we were the first to do it. They just started. They almost don't know what they're doing still yet. So we, we have done it for, for since 1995, the copper to copper. Um, and then we brought it here in the United States in 1999 with partnership with Rigid. Basically, in, in 1998, Rigid went over to Europe and bought the Swiss company that actually makes the tools. And when they did that, they met with Vega because Vega was the biggest customer of this company. And Vega says, oh, you're in the United States and you're well known in the United States. Why don't you take our fittings and the tools and sell them over in the United States? Then when we get a sales force, we'll make a contract for four years, and then when we, 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 your sales force uh, will re relinquish it all back to us when we, when we have a sales force. Well, 2004 or five, whatever it was, he said, let's have it back. And they said, no, no, you guys sell fittings, we sell tools. So that's where the difference is. So we have a partnership with them. They test with our tool, uh, with our fittings, and we test with their tools. There are other manufacturers out there. I know I've seen on Bob's desk a big, big uh, thing, but we recommend Rigid. Vega does. If they want to use somebody else's tools, that is all well and fine. But the tool manufacturer is has to be responsible for if it works or not. Okay. Now that, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, Two thousand. What was it? Eight. Anyway, uh, 2005, I think it was, was stainless steel, and you guys you guys carry the stainless steel as well. And then in 2000, 2012, we came out with the Mega Press, which is the carbon steel. Um, 
this is very uh, important. We have a training facility to which I'm going to try to get more and more of the contractors and more and more of the, the guys in the industrial and, and the maintenance guys up to Carlisle, up to National New Hampshire to do a training on metals. It might seem funny, but there's a hell of a lot more, and they do a lot better job than I do. You know, they, they, they train trainers and they know how to get the point across a little bit better. Uh, so that training center was built in New Hampshire. Uh, right next to it was a building for our Amer North American headquarters. And all of a sudden, Vanguard Plastics came up for sale. We bought them, we moved to Kansas, bought a whole bunch of land so that we can move some manufacturing there in the future. All of our PEX plumbing, plastic fittings are all made in, in McPherson, Kansas, just outside of Wichita. And our North American headquarters is in Wichita, the tallest building in uh, Kansas, the Epic Center. And you don't want to be up there in this Antonio. Um, in our distribution centers, we have four. And that's the Epic Center there. You see how tall it is. It's all glass, and you're, you know they're on the, we, we occupy the ninth through the thirteenth floor. Um, so Reno, Nevada, we have a distribution center. McPherson, um, Kansas, we have one. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia is where everything comes in from Europe. It comes into the port of Jacksonville, gets on a train, and goes up to Atlanta, and then it gets distributed. So if you see, if you're ordering um, um, zero light fittings, ZL fittings, you're noticing that a lot of times they're coming out of there because we're getting there as fast as we can, and everything's being distributed until we have enough stock of the zero light fittings that we can distribute to the rest of them. Just like Megapress is all in Carlisle, until there's enough stock, and then they'll put it in all the other places. So you'll you might see some backordered ZL, it'll come right from Atlanta. It won't come from, from Carlisle. It's getting better and better. Um, I was just talking to Bob about it, but we had a, a fire back in last year. And everything was supposed to be better by July, but they, there was a fight with the insurance <coughs> company, so you know how that works and then so we get a little behind. Um, and of course our Carlisle Distribution Center. My wife has worked for Vega for 25 years. Basically the company that Vega bought to come to the United States was Stadler Radiant Floors. When they bought that company, um, my wife had worked here since 1989. So uh, when they decided to move, and this is why I don't no longer work for Beesman, they decided to move, they <laughs> said, uh, you know, well actually she was the original operations manager. They asked us to go to Kansas, it was Kansas. We said no, there's only so many times you can say no and then you're out the company. So uh, they asked her to move, to move the operations. It, it was in Merrimack, New Hampshire, right next to the Budweiser plant. But they decided to, uh, they, did, they actually decided to, um, to ask her to move to Carlisle, close the one in Merrimack, New Hampshire, and open the one in Carlisle, because it's easier to get, to get the product to people. Their goal is to get product to people within 24 to 48 hours. We really try. We really try. Um, if you ever in that area and you want a tour, just call me. Um, I can I can let Carol know and I'm bringing some people by through, and we can do that. Um, Christine, if you want to do that, we can. I've been to that facility. Oh, you have. Okay. Oh, I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know. It's nice. Well, it was before it was even open. I'm yeah, it's still nice. It's beautiful. She, she, she has a tip-top shape. She keeps it really, really. She's but a that's it right lady. there. It's right off. It's right off uh, 44. Uh, right, it's exit 44 off 81. Um, it's 175,000 square feet. So. Um, we keep it pretty well loaded. Um, so anyway, that's that's to show you about the company. Um, I already talked about the delivery times that we try to, and, and all of our systems are set up just, just like this. This is this has to be Kansas. It's a little bit bigger, but if you look at it, it's not much different than than the way it is in Carlisle. So you guys would love it. It, it sparkles it in there. The lights are beautiful. You can see in Merrimack. You could you and I would bump into each other. We wouldn't even see each other. It's so dark, and there's an old old uh, mill for Nashua duct tape company that was the company um, you guys if you need answers and you can't get a hold of me do not be afraid to call our inside sales people they have a wealth of knowledge <coughs> our inside sales uh, people the 800 number you should have it on your your quick dial call them ask them you need pricing availability they do it they are like that they are right on and the three people that will answer if they're, you know, if they're not on vacation or anything, it's usually Alicia. She's really good. Casey Blue, he does also does the returns. You know, Casey's really good at what he does. He also does all the returns for your RGAs and everything. And then there's Liz Williams, and Liz just got appointed the manager of this department. So we have three of the best, 
in the, for the Northeast. So they will, those three will answer the phone if it's coming from our region. So you, you don't really need to know their names, you'll just recognize them if you call them. Anytime you need price and availability, you can't call the warehouse, they're not going to know. They know numbers. They have little RF guns and they just go over, doot, one, doot, two, how many it says on their gun they have to pick. They don't know anything about plumbing, they don't know anything, they don't even know what this is. You could ask them and they say, well, it's a piece of pipe that's bent or something. They would not know what it is. They get, all they know is it's a part. And it's kind of good that way, you know, you know, that way they, they can get their job done. But yeah, don't be, don't hesitate to call them. These are our products. Um, you guys don't do the, the Radiant or the, or the, the Pure Flow. But the Vega, uh, actually you guys do do some Pure Flow. You sell it to some people. Um, but, uh, and I think you guys get that through APR. Um, but anyway, the, the Pro Press, is, Pro Press is, is classified as the stainless steel and the copper. That's Pro Press. One's called Pro Press Stainless and just the other one's just called Pro Press. And if it has a G on it, it's for your fuels. And it's yellow. It has a yellow, and it should have yellow markings on it as well. The stainless steel has 316 and 304. Anybody using it for drinking water, it's got to be 316 with the EPDM sealing element. If, it ha if it's going to be 304, it, it, you, now it's coming with the FKM sealing element. We still have some EPDM we're finding, and we needed to make some room with our part numbers. So you're going to find that most of it's going to come to 304 with the FKM <coughs> sealing element. And the sealing elements, uh, I'll give you this here. It gives you a little more discussion on it. The EPDM is for your common waters and, and most of your airs and things like that. The, uh, the HNBR, which is your yellow for your fuels. And then FKM is just for a higher temperature for processing and probably like solar hot water or something like that, just for higher temperatures. The EPDM will go 0 to 250 degrees at 200 PSI. The FKM will do 0 to 285 with spikes at 356. And the HNBR for your fuels, the yellow one, the yellow one will do zero, I uh, will do minus 40, these are Fahrenheit temperatures anyway, um, minus 40 to 180, okay? Yeah. And it will do 200 PSI, but if you're using it for ga natural gas or propane, because of the LC4 regulations, CSA LC4 for gas piping, it's got to have a maximum temp pressure of 125 PSI on it. You're not going to find any gas around here at 125 PSI. You might find it in a field, you know, in a gas field, but you're not really going to find it around here for most of the projects that we're looking at. And then Megapress. Megapress came along 2012. We, it was about a five year process before we even did it. The machine cost about $100 million. They call it Megapress because this, this part of the building here, it would fit right on top of it. It's a big machine. There you have three of them now. <laughs> and yeah. they pump out uh, carbon steel. Uh, before I forget, all the fittings that we have are hydroformed. It's a, like a big injection molding process. They are not wrought fittings, not like your common solder fittings. That's why we don't want them to, to become um, commodities. We just don't want them to become commodities. They're different. They're higher quality. They're not, this is not a regular black fitting. It's, it's a hydroformed carbon steel fitting with you know all these components and it's got a zinc and nickel coating on it. It's got a 10 year warranty where regular black fittings don't have, what does it have, a tailgate warranty basically. You know, like the, the contract is going to put a one year in most places. I'm not sure <coughs> every place is like that. I've, I've, you know, since I've moved here I've, I'm learning more and more about Pennsylvania. Um, so that's basically it. These here, the copper fittings have a 50 year warranty. Mm -hmm. Um, and 50 year warranty on a copper fitting and if the job's over fifty thousand dollars we can offer the, the contractor five years consequential damage for the first five years if anything happens in there we'll replace the rugs the computers everything so we believe in our product there's a couple things you're going to know there's a there's a patented smart connect feature on all our fittings um, and that is if you don't press it and you test it the way we ask you to test it, you'll find the unpressed joint. It's a guaranteed leak path. So if they forget to press a joint, and they test it between half a pound and 85 pounds air, 
or 15 pounds in 85 pounds water, it's going to pee all over them or it's going to whistle on them if they forgot to, to press, <coughs> press that joint. But if they press it, usually there's no problems. And there's a slide in here I'll show you after it, if it's, this is the right one, um, where I can tell you this, this, this works all the time. Vega didn't have to make that Smart Connect feature. We did that as a company because we thought it would, would benefit the, the contractors and give them peace of mind. Um, and, you know, when we didn't have it in the first couple of years, there was a job at the Pentagon, and it broke apart above a four-star general's desk. <laughs> it didn't have nothing to do with us. It was all in the contractor, but we stepped to the plate. We made this fitting work this way. And basically, it's a little deviation. I'll pass this around. <laughs> and there's a, I got some arrows there. There's a little deviation with a ceiling on it goes, or ring if you want to call it that, but I, I'm told not to. Um, and when, once we press that, we press on both sides and on the top, and that goes away. That's on the half to two inch copper fittings, the half to two inch stainless steel fittings. On the two and a half to four inch fittings, it's a loose fitting. And the only way I can just show that, because I don't have a piece of two and a half inch copper, the only way I can show that is on the mega press, you'll notice it's a loose fitting. Okay? And that gives you your Smart Connect feature. And it's the same way in the two and a half to four inch copper fittings. Okay? Um, and that's how, how it works. Now, the two and a half, and if you can see, you look, you look at that, that fitting, the, the ceiling element's not in it, but all it is is a ceiling element in a rib. You know, pass that one around. It's all is a ceiling element and a rib on the half to two inch fittings on the copper and stainless. When you get to the larger ones, two and a half to four, you have a stainless steel gripping ring, 420 stainless steel gripping ring. You have a Teflon separator ring, and then you have a ceiling element for whatever one you necessary. We don't do ProPress gas above two inch though, so you won't see the yellow ceiling element in the larger fittings. This makes sense, right? Um, <coughs> So the same thing with the mega press, but the mega press has got the ceiling elements. The, the actually the gripping ring is a little bit different. It's bi-directional. Then you have a stainless steel, another stainless steel separator ring, and the ceiling element has a rib in it, so that it can clamp down on that black iron. It's a little bit more. If you you know you know it's black steel is a little tougher than it is on copper and stainless steel. So that's why we do it. You want to look at that one. That space between here. On the gripping ring absolutely closes and all of those bite down onto the black pipe and here's a cutaway of it too so I'll just give you a little background on that um, we are the only manufacturer with uh, press systems in multiple multiple metals and with multiple ceiling elements so it should be easy, you know, to, to, to understand that there are other press manufacturers out there. All they have is copper with EPDM, and they don't have the amount of different fittings. And you guys have noticed probably that in the copper, we have well over 700 different variations of that the, the copper fittings. In the stainless steel, we have over 600. And in the carbon steel, the mega press, we started out two years ago with 75. Now we're at over 200, 200 fittings in the mega press. So... We're doing, we're doing what we can and we do a lot of different things and everything is called a system with Vega and we try to maintain that. We don't want to become commodities. We have residential solutions which you guys don't do a hell of a lot with but we have commercial and industrial solutions which is right up your alley. This is what you guys do um, and if you guys need any compatibility especially with the stainless there are, on page 17 in the book here, there are a bunch of, and this is what's nice about the new, the new uh, literature, is every literature is going to have an application, and it will show your stainless steel, your copper, and your mega press carbon steel, and all the different applications that might be on there. But if you don't see it on there, don't hesitate to ask. Give us a call or give, give a technical service a call, and they will definitely go over it. And there's also another short uh, <coughs> thing on the on the ceiling elements and then we have all the codes and, and um, the codes and listings as well
industrial solutions. I am doing so good with you guys with industrial, with John, with Chris, with Larry, and with, we're, and you know just all of your, your people that have been you know our outside people have been very very good with with going to uh, to visit with people and we're you know we're doing really well out there. Um, but you know we we talked at the AD meeting that we should do this because we you guys need to know when they call up that you guys need to know what they're talking about. Um, you can add value to every project. We're going to skip residential because you guys really don't do it all, but there is opportunity for mega press and, 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 and pro press in, in residential. Um, this is a big uh, commercial type building. This is in Utah, I believe. And uh, you now we can do these. We can, we, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do in there with pipe. Um, all of our products are uh, ULFM for fire sprinklers. We were just talking about that. Uh, we do have ICC. We just have we have a verbal and a, a quick letter for NFPA 54, uh, which is natural fuel gas, which you don't really need in this, but some people are arguing about it. But we have ICC, which is the Pennsylvania code, so we're covered there with the gas. Basically, all it boils down to is CSA UL has a test a testing procedure it's called LC4 and basically we, we're listed for, for gas piping um, that's all it is um, industrial solutions uh, the different the different uh, oils different everything that we can do with with uh, with industrial even just even you know piping to a heater uh, these guys um, you know 304 and 316 stainless in the eco as well um, and there's whole lots of job businesses out there that use copper and everything that we're doing. Although it seems like we're using a lot of a lot of stainless around here now. Uh, we'll skip this guy because this is for Pex. And that that's what I have for you on this. Um, any questions? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go over a few things quickly here. Um, we had a name change not too long ago, and it kind of confuses a lot of people. This is called an XLC ring. It's for two and a half to four inch. But they've gotten rid of the C on the fittings. Now they're just called XL because our XL fittings went away. The original ones were, were bronze, okay, which are, were not zero lead. So now if you need it, you're going to see in the catalog that it's, a, it's an XL fitting from two and a half to four inch. And hopefully that gets rid of some of the confusion. Half to two inch are jaws like this, scissor, scissor type. Okay? Two and a half to four inch on copper and stainless are XLC jaws with the actuator in the ring that snaps around the fitting. On the Mega Press, half to one inch, because it's a lot bigger, IPS size, half to one inch is a scissor type jaw inch and a quarter to two inch. Same actuator though. So that, that's, that's what it is. So it just this snaps around the fitting um, like so. It's a lot easier when it's hung up in the air and with pipe on it and everything, but basically it just goes in like this. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one I think. Yeah, it's mega -based. But yeah, it goes in like that, and the actuator just kind of clamps it right down on the pipe. So, anybody ask you about Megapress, the green dots are EPDM, the yellow dots are, are um, HNBR, which is for your fuels, gas, that's Megapress gas. Um, basically, all we want to do is want a nice clean cut, deburr it, and you, you want to take a piece of sand cloth and clean it. There is prep tools in the kit. They can do it any which way they want. So you put it together. An IPS pen. See that? <laughs> oh, it's a good thing. You want to mark it because if anybody kicks it, then you you know it's it does you want a metal to metal. The only ones you don't care about metal to metal is the, the repair couplings. And <coughs> and the jaws are so hard to change. I don't know. I don't want to spend all day doing that. But that's it. <laughs> so, um, but anyhow, 
you want to explain to your customers, and I think the best way to explain it to you guys is how fast this, this process is. Okay? That's completed. Imagine if you were working on a job and you had to bring a, a, a power vice in and a threading, threading dies and all this stuff and oil and smell and everything. And on the copper, it's, it's probably even a little faster. The new tool is even faster at 340. The copper, the biggest selling point on the copper is, is it's faster. Yes, we're, we're four times more expensive. On the small stuff, on the large stuff, we're very comparable. But fire watch, hot permits, they've got to pull these. And after they did unsolder a joint or a series of joints, they have to have minimum four hours somebody to stand there with a fire extinguisher. <coughs> now you're paying two guys to do the same job that's taking four times as much time anyway. And the pop that we heard at the end, that's... That's, that's, a, that's a signature. Okay. Yeah. That's the signature of the tool. There is also uh, a um, compact tools. There's two of them. There's a 210 and a 200. Those are, are, are you know, for up to inch and a quarter with the copper and the stainless. That they will not do mega press. So if, if they want to do mega press, just tell them that they have to have the, the three and four hundred series or the standard tools. Which now it's a 340 if they want a new tool. If they have older tools and they wonder if they can do mega press, the CT 400 works. The 320 works, 330 and 340. Do we have that written anywhere? You can write it down because <laughs> I, I actually, I actually, in nine, I don't know how many CT400s you're going to find. I bought mine in 1999, my, my very own, so it's, it's, it's been around a long time. But it's just three 400 series of the standard tools. The, the, uh, and I think it tells you in the book, actually. Okay. But the, um, it might just say 330, but you'll know that's the standard size tool on the carbon steel. Any questions? I didn't take up too much of your lunch. Enjoy it a little bit and hopefully you can digest. You know. <laughs> Do you guys that are at the counter get many inquiries? Where? I, I, really I mean, they, I mean, we get orders from them. But, Do, not too much but they seem to know, yeah, they know what, what they, they, want. they want when they come in. Yeah, we try to do our best. <laughs> Not everybody still knows. There's some guys out there. You got any of that crimp stuff? Um, even though we have been around since 1999 in the states, the copper fittings have been. So there, there are people still. You still get any of that crimp stuff, and they don't realize that that propressed gas um, is copper. They go, "You got any of that gas pipe?" And a lot of times the guys will ask, "To get any of that that pressed gas pipe?" And they're talking black iron. It, it, it's going to take a little bit longer than to, you know, just change their vocabulary over. Um, the nice thing is we were first and everybody calls their stuff us. So it's easy for you, the guys that stock it. The guys that don't stock it, they'll give them anything, any press fitting if they're asking for pro press and it's happened too many times. One of the slides I didn't have on here was uh, Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino down in Las Vegas. I love using that one. It's a way to toot our own horn. The general contractor did not want press fittings in there at all. We have 660,000 copper pro press joints in there. Not one leak. He's our best salesman. He tells all the other big... We, got, we actually got Lucas Oil Field because of his relationship with the general contractor at Lucas Oil Field, which is where the Indianapolis Colts and the Super Bowl was that, that same year after it was finished. So there are a lot of buildings like that around. There are a lot of, you know, they're around here. We even have a lot right around here. We, you know, like I, I mentioned, the Pentagon, um, the, the uh, casino up here in uh, Hollywood. Um, some of the other jobs, there are some bigger ones and some smaller ones and things like that. We have a lot of manufacturing over here. Um, there's a lot of this propress uh, copper, um, you know, stainless especially, up us. Um, we just got an order, and we know we just, well, well, we're in the process of getting an order for a big stainless uh, 316 job up in 100, and, I think a list for $125,000 for uh, Bermudian Springs. 
Uh, Kevin and I helped spec that, so we feel real good about that one. <laughs> uh, but uh, also, um, Utz is, you know, cons consistently. Uh, York Hospital for the last two to three years, I think they were in the hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of ProPress copper and stainless over there. Uh, Church and Dwight, I know they have a ton of copper over there. The contractor put it in, and now they they actually have the tools and the, and the, and they actually put some stock and fittings over there as well. So we are being accepted everywhere more and more. Um, Larry and I had just been working on this. The gas company was a little more um, friendly and would give us time. We'd, we'd have it, but I think we're, we're going to go. They're going to both both companies are going forward anyway, because really the gas company doesn't have any say. Contractors, you, they're originally afraid of gas companies where they don't have to be anymore. Because I've called all the gas companies, their main offices, and they said we own from the street to the meter. They don't own anything inside unless they're installing it. The only person that owns ins inside is the contractor that's doing the gas piping, the authority having jurisdiction, which is the, the inspector, and the building owner. So at this point, I, I've thrown up my hands with, uh, with Columbia Gas. I've got one more. This is my fifth call into them who left a message. Um, and I think the contractor is just going to go for it anyway. And that's, that, that, that's going to be a nice job, that Windmere, uh, Windridge, Windridge uh, Farms. So, um, so you're, you're going to see more and more of us. And if, I have, if you have any questions, you can call me on, on my cell phone. Uh, they, I may not answer right away, but as soon as I get done with talking to people, I will, I will get back to you. Um, have you ever had a problem with me getting back to you? <laughs> not at all. And you can be honest. Not at you all. You can be honest. I don't. I don't. Oh, mess around. Yeah, I would. No, yeah, not at all. Uh, and, and, and you know, you can ask Larry, and you can ask all the other outside salespeople. I do call them right back. So <laughs> if you have somebody to ask you a question, you don't have any idea, please either give him my phone number off the, off the card I've given you, or you you call me and ask me, and I'll I'll give you the answer <coughs> to the best of my knowledge. And if I don't know, I usually call a technical inside. Uh, by the way, my company, I, in 1999, I went to Germany uh, for the IST show. That was when Vigo was going to buy Stadler. I went with Stadler and Wiesmann Boiler, which was the company I used to work for, um, in between. But I was a contractor in 99. And Walter Wigner Sr., he's no longer with us, but his son and his <coughs> nephew are that run the company now. But Walter used to run the company. And he grabbed me out of 16 contractors. And he was a rough, tough old German guy. And he says, come here, boy, you'll never solder again. He handed me a 19 millimeter of joint, which is almost three quarter. And he put it together and he said, press this, pull the trigger. You're never going to solder again. And his German accent. And I said, you know, he's almost right, because I got back, waited for rigid. Of course, we always wait for rigid. <laughs> got the tools. <laughs> got the tools. And uh, I proceeded. I got a beautiful job. Um, it was a... Uh, 11,500 square foot home and my HVAC bill for that, my cost for the HVAC in this job was $108,000 in 2000. So <laughs> that job took us two years. I didn't originally do the plumbing, but I was asked to finish the plumbing because the plumber just got tired of being there for two years. And so we finished the plumbing too. And shortly after that, I closed the business. I had an infection in my, my elbow, almost put me in the box and in the ground. So I decided to do something a little bit easier. And the opportunity with Wiesman Boiler came about. And then, you know, I told you since then what happened. But that's how why I'm here. I mean, I'd like to be out there, you know, this year actually. You know, uh, I would like to be out there doing that, but I can't anymore. So, um, so that's my story. And I'm here to work for you guys, not and with you guys, not not against you at all. So anytime you need me, just you know, just phone call away. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for your time. When the question of pricing comes up, and somebody says, "Well, so and so gave me a quote on press material, and not your product, obviously. How how do we sell your product of a, of a cheaper?" You, 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 well, you have to ask is, is you have to ask is it pro press? And they say, well, yeah. Is it Vega ProPress? Because everybody wants to call themselves ProPress because that's Kleenex. That's right. you know all the different brands that are out there. You ask them if it, and you say, well, it's not. It's not apples to apples. Okay. First of all, some of those fittings are rock fittings. Do they have different metals? Do they have different sealing elements? Do they have? Do 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 they have? 
over 700 different fitting variations to make your job go well and, and, and work, work to your precision? Or do they have to custom make their fittings, which a lot of them are trying to do? And then they'll get a fitting that's soldered together with press ends on it. We just tried to get rid of this, away from this, didn't we? Um, that's, that's one way of doing it. And, you know, does it work every time? No. But I'll tell you what, if you're competing against our own people, we do not give any better multipliers to anybody. And we don't give any back ends like some of these other guys. You know, your Nipcos and your, and your, um, and your Elkhart or Alberts or what are they called now? Apollo. Yeah. Uh, so we don't do that. They, they tend to try to bundle if they want to make it a commodity. That's their best hope to do anything. But if it fails, if they, if they fail because that's, they have 200 fittings like that, if they fail, it doesn't matter. Apollo's always got ball valves and, 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 and pressure relief valves and things like that to, to, to things that they've done, uh, as well as NIPCO. They can fall back on whatever else they make. We just do press fittings. Yeah, we have PEX. We, we're the largest PEX manufacturer in North America, and we do have PEX fittings and stuff like that. But basically, the current PEX fitting that we have is not even ours. It's something we inherited with, with Vanguard. The PEX press fitting is what we brought here from Germany. So really, that's everything we are all about here in, in the United States at Vega LLC is press. So if we fail at press, we fail. We're done. So if I call you and tell you that I have a customer that has a quote and they had already gotten a quote on Express, yeah. you won't be able to do any better pricing for me. If the job is $50,000 or very close to that, we can try. Um, that's the level, I don't have any control over that, but right. that is the level they they set it at. And all and that we've got is domestic, I'm gonna fight, right? I'm going to fight like crazy when I go to my national sales meeting because right. jobs of that caliber are very few and far between in my region. Right. I do my best, with, you know, and then if you want, I can talk to the contractor and, but you can say you're not doing, you're not, you're not, you, you're not being bid apples for right. apples. Can I see your list? Don't even ask for the price, but can I see your list? And, you know, if they've got a takeoff on there, I'm sure a lot of those fittings that they're asking for, they're not getting. They're getting custom made, and they have to give. The, the other nice thing, we've had some back orders, and we've had some, some problems getting delivered. But our competition's having just as bad, if not worse, delivery problems right now. So I know. But you've pretty much gotten the delivery problems straight now. Pretty I much. Pretty that much. There's a couple here or there. Right. Um, the, the, the compact tool kit, the, the special we were running, right now we're having April 30th is the day those will be ready. And it is all domestic, correct? What do you mean? As far as the Vega. No. No, no we, are, we are from Germany. Oh, but we are, we are all by America Act in AERA. Okay. We are in the, the Buy America Act. And we are all AARA, okay. and we're sold as a system. So if there's a job um, and somebody's looking for stainless, uh, there is no equal. There's no tubular stainless out there. Uh, you know, copper tube size stainless out there. Uh, so actually, we got a school. We got two school systems. That's publicly public, but we we've, we've gotten the jobs because. Public okay. money, yeah, it's not made here and it doesn't pass the Pennsylvania Steel Law, but the Pennsylvania Steel Law doesn't apply because there's no other products like it. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know what made me think it was, some of it was made here. No, some of the stainless pipe is made here, but we can't say that it's made here because the company that makes it for us, they also make it in Europe as well, and we, we have to do processes to it to make it to work. That's why when you, when you do the stainless steel fittings, you do our pipe. <coughs> you guys get those big coffins that come in. Or you go get the big coffins, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. yeah. The twenty foot, the twenty, the foot coffins. Yeah. Well, we did a lot of different ways of doing that. We want to protect the pipe as much as we can. Our companies that uh, that truck it sometimes they don't do such a good job, but we try. You know? We know that well. And you guys do a good job. Yeah. We pick it up almost every day, right? So. But, uh, well, the crates don't get the crates. No. We get the, <coughs> the just the boxes and. No, like I'm saying, but, 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 the, but when you go get stainless lengths of pipe, it's usually in a, it should be a crate. Usually, a crate. usually it is, yeah. yeah. In fact, I think we're still going to Are they nice to you out there or are they real jerks?
Never been. Haven't been up there. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to the truck drivers when they come in. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they're usually pretty good with everybody, so. Well, and that is, that's a huge convenience for us to be able to do it. Oh, but yeah. again, I, I like to remind our folks that <coughs> we don't want to take advantage of being able to do it by calling at the last minute and begging and pleading and whining and If you want, calling around. if you have an emergency, ASAP, make sure the inside salespeople know, just don't fax in a PO because it could be at the bottom of a bunch of faxes or a bunch of emails could be at the bottom of the list. But if you don't want to do you call the inside salespeople, Alicia, Liz, or Casey will pick up and you say, I have an ASAP, it's a real emergency. You can order, if you order um, before noontime, noontime 1 o'clock on today, you can have it after 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's after 10 o'clock because that way there all the push downs for the regular jobs go through but the pickups, the customer pickups will be, that's when those go through and they try their best to get them. I mean usually an ASAP isn't 12 pages of, of order either. Right. You know it's two or three items and that's not hard for somebody to go out and pick. So that's what Don't they, be the little boy that cried wolf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. JC. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I yeah. haven't really. No, but they, 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 they we're, we're here actually to, to yeah. help. You know, um, they are too. Uh, I know everybody in the supply chain because that's my wife's part of the business. Um, you know, and I know all the way up to the VP of supply chain. So um, we know <coughs> what they're trying to accomplish <coughs> and uh, how they're trying to get everybody happy. And, and you know, they do, they do a pretty good job. Sometimes some of our customers are upset that we we get product so fast because they wanted to change an order and it was already gone and picked and it's waiting because sometimes when they're not busy for the day they'll pick tomorrow's orders and they're already waiting to go on the truck the truck they the guy pulls the truck way back well backs another one in, in place and it's sitting ready right there for tomorrow morning to go hunt the truck and then they close the trailer it's already you know that, i'm just saying i've seen it that's that's you know that's how fast it goes it's like a well-oiled machine you know over in europe they have and I do know in Kansas they have one. It's all robots. They call it a high boy. It's all robots. They just have, even the company I used to work for, Vespin, same thing. Warehouse is miles long or whatever, and it's 10 stories high and like five stories below the ground. And there's these little robots that go and get a package like this and brings it down to the person that's got to pick the things out and it just goes back. And it doesn't matter, matter where it goes back because the computer knows where it is. So it, it's always picking forward the, the stuff that's going all the time, that stuff gets close to the closer to the front so they can go faster. So it's it's really 1984, man, <laughs> to watch some of this stuff. It, it's it's a little cart and it's robotically and computerized and it's it's amazing mm. how fast it goes. You know, we own our own mines. So at our plants it goes it goes where the train comes in from the mines, foundry, manufacturing, distribution. So, it's, so you really have control over it from, they have control from over coming it. out of the ground to And when, and when we got to the United States, we used to buy all our resins from the company that Vanguard used to buy their resins for, for their plastic PEX pipe and everything. And what did they do? They bought a company that made resins and then they decided to play around and get some plastic engineers and we got some good plastic. In it. Now our PEX tube is just as flexible as any other one that's out there. It used to be pretty stiff. And people say, I don't want to use that, that's pretty stiff tubing. But now it's really flexible because we make our own resins and we make our, you know, and to extrude our own tubing. So that's the types of thing. And plus the, our polymer <coughs> fittings, our PEX press polymer fittings, we make those too out of our own material. So it's it's pretty, you know, pretty well known uh, that, we, that we do it all now by ourselves. We don't have to worry about buying product from someone else and not having control over it. Because like I said, this, the, the stainless steel, we buy it from a company and they make the tubing, stainless steel tubing for it. We do process to it to make it a little bit more pliable so we can anneal it. Basically, that's what it's called. So that it can do the smaller sizes without the, the gripping rings, which I'm sorry, I don't have a big piece of stainless, but see these gripping rings. Uh, that way, there it anneals. And this will be like if you look at this, this is a really stainless, the stainless, uh, I mean, uh, joint. The, the, the sealing element, the reason why we get such a good warranty on it, if you look at it, is the, the sealing element never really comes in contact with what's going through it. And it doesn't dry out like most your O-rings will because it never touches the air either. We press all around and on top. So that's encapsulated. So 
basically it's called a, a static seal, not a dynamic seal. Dynamic seal will be like your uh, groove lock fittings, where the where the rubber sits right on it. And that's the only one we're worried about. Our our NFPA 31 for oil. It says no elastomer uh, seals should be used, and that's because they didn't want groove fittings to be used on oil because they'll rot out because of the, the petroleum mm -hmm. base and and that. Also, they didn't want anybody putting firm coats on them. <laughs> right. So. That's, that's basically, so that's the fight we're having right now. That's basically the only, the only listing we don't have is for, is for fuel oil. We can do it. We know we can do it. We've, we've, we've tested it. We do it in Europe. It's just fighting with NFPA to get it. All right. We good?